Hey everyone, in this episode, let's see how we can Jobify an existing system in ECS. We will convert this older syntax, which only runs on the main thread, to use the system base class and take advantage of multi-threading. Though the change looks relatively minor, we will explore how we got here and see how system base evolved into its current state. The net result is that we can offload some of the computation to our worker threads. Even in this simple example, we'll get about a three times speed up just for changing a few lines. We're picking up our old ECS example project, the sine wave of cubes. Download the starter project from the link in the description if you don't have a copy of the project handy. You will need Unity 2019.3 or later. In the package manager, just double check that you're up to date on the entities and hybrid renderer packages. If you're just joining us and not too familiar with the C-sharp job system, be sure to check out the video on that with the link in the description. Though the syntax is quite a bit different than what we will use here with ECS, it should help you understand concepts like jobs and job handles that we'll see in this episode. Okay, so here's our wave system that we created to move a set of cubes in a sinusoidal pattern. It inherits from component system. In the inspector, I have the spawner set to spawn about 20,000 cubes or so. This system runs about 50 frames per second on a Core i9 laptop, so not too bad. If you open up the profiler, window analysis profiler, you'll see that the wave system only runs on the main thread. And there is other stuff running on the worker threads, but it's just other parts of Unity, not the default world wave system. That's what we're interested in. Our goal is to jobify our logic and split the wave system amongst multiple threads. Historically, to use multi-threading with ECS, you would have to do something like this. If you wanted logic on the main thread, you would need to create a component system like we have on the left. And then to access the worker threads, you would have to create a different system like the one on the right. With a few differences, this part down here should look similar to what we did in the last episode where we broke the logic into jobs. But there's a lot of boilerplate to write something relatively simple, especially where you need to instantiate the job, initialize the job, and then schedule the job. Fortunately, Unity has come to the rescue again and simplified the syntax. Let's start by looking at a slightly older, but still valid way of using the job system with ECS. First, we'll add a using Unity jobs at the top. That gives us access to the c -sharp job system. Instead of a component system, we can make this a job component system. With a job component system, the on update is required, but it returns a job handle and it takes a job handle as an argument. This is called input depths, input dependencies in the abstract class. So I will call it that as well. And again, the dependencies are there for job safety. While the on update itself runs on the main thread, everything inside the entities for each query is what you could potentially offload to a worker thread. Because it's a job, we need to schedule it, pass the input dependencies inside as an argument, of course, when you schedule a job, you get a job handle back. If you wanted to use that, you would store that temporarily, job handle, job handle equals all of this, and then we return the job handle at the bottom. Now, if you're only running this one entities for each query, then you could simplify this further and just return that whole thing straight away. And then you wouldn't even need to bother with the job handle at all. But I didn't want to hide that, so I wrote it out just so you know the job handle is there. Now, after we schedule, Unity will automatically throw the job into the queue. Then it does this magic and distributes the job over the worker threads. As we mentioned before, because the entities for each is jobified, the data in and out is limited. It must be either blittable or a native container. This time elapsed time left over from our old system is a reference type, and we can't use that directly within job logic. That's only allowed on the main thread. So you'll get an error if I try to run this as is. For a job, you need to pass in a blittable type instead. So I will define a float elapsed time equals time dot elapsed time. That comes from the time data struct in your packages and that returns a double. So it needs to be cast as a float. And then I just replace this with elapsed time in the sign function. 
This part is the job portion, and out here on update runs on the main thread, so everything outside the entities for each, and that's the only place we have access to time.elapsed time. Now while we're using the job component system, we have some other optimizations available to us. In the for each query, we don't have to pass all of our components in by reference. Right now, everything uses the ref keyword. If you examine the logic, you'll see that we're only reading the move speed and reading the wave data, but only writing to the translation. We can use the in keyword instead of ref to indicate we mean these as read only. And that can give you a small amount of savings. Again, over thousands of entities, every little bit counts. And that basically is our ECS system adapted for use with the job system. When you jobify something in this way with the entities for each, it runs a little bit differently than the simple iJob that we saw in the last video. It can actually behave as a parallel job, which is useful if you're doing the same task over many, many entities. Whereas a single iJob works just on one thread, a parallel job splits its entities into small groups, what ECS calls chunks. The chunks of cubes are then processed on different threads. There's still only one job handle and only one job, but the work is being divided up. And that's why when you go to the profiler, you can see the wave system split over multiple worker threads. And you can see we're getting 150 frames per second, which is about three times what we started with. We're getting a speed bump from both the job system distributing the work as well as the burst compiler, which kicks in while you're using the c -sharp job system. The burst compiler does some stuff behind the scenes. It compiles the c -sharp jobs into more optimized machine code. It's on by default for jobified code, so it's just there making things faster. You do need to make a standalone build to appreciate that fully, but even without making a build, getting a threefold increase with just a few extra lines is terrific. If you compare the newer syntax with the older way to jobify this, then no contest. This is a much more compact way to write the same thing. But it's still good to understand the job system and how to use job handles to set up dependencies. And that's why we showed you briefly how to use the old way. Even though there's more code, it's a little bit easier to see all the steps involved. Now you can use the job component system for running tasks on the main thread or the worker threads. There's no need for two different systems anymore. If for some reason you want to make sure that the system runs only on the main thread, what you can do is replace schedule with run. Then instead of returning a job handle, once we do that, it's not on the job queue, we simply return default. That makes the job handle unnecessary. And you just add an attribute always synchronize system at the top that forces the system to synchronize all of its dependencies before it runs. After that, essentially, it's executing on the main thread. If you need to do certain things like I.O., things that don't really lend themselves to waiting and scheduling, or if you need access to static members like input or time data directly, then you might need to invoke run. Basically, that lets you use the system to run only on the main thread, or you can choose schedule to distribute to the worker threads. Let's go back to schedule and keep it jobified and return the job handle so we can do one better. And that's switch from the job component system to the even newer system base. That's similar, but lets you manage dependencies a little more easily. So let's see what that looks like. Using a system base, there's still an on update method, but the job handles are gone. This argument goes away and this returns void. The entities for each query is still running a job, and we still need to schedule, but we no longer need to pass in the input dependency. And we can drop the job handle. We don't need to return that anymore. You can still set up job handles, but it's implicit most of the time. You can simply trigger a bunch of entity for each queries one after another. Unity will instead just assume that you want dependencies between this one and this one automatically. You just have to write the queries in the right order. So now there's less passing job handles into schedule methods. So this is a simplified way of creating the dependencies without needing to write out the job handles explicitly. Now you still have the option of using job handles and managing them yourself. I'll just show you an example from the documentation. Each entities for each query could return a job handle. 
just pretend like each job is doing something different and we needed them to wait for each other for some reason. You could use a property called dependency to set up the dependencies manually. You pass this dependency into the schedule method as an argument. You could combine the job handles using the job handle class. You can just invoke combine dependencies to make a new job handle. And then you just make another job, depend on them, something like that. Now, you might not need to do this at all, but it's great to know that it's there if you need it. But most of us will be happy to use this implicit dependency system. Make your entities for each queries in order, and they'll just happen in the order that they're written. Fantastic and simple. In our case, the wave system only has a small bit of logic that probably fits into one job. And like the job component system, the system base gives you the option of running the job in parallel. The method is named a little bit differently though. Here it's called schedule parallel. And if you wanted to treat it like a regular job, you could just use schedule. And if you want to run this only on the main thread, again, you could change this to run with the always synchronize system attribute. But let's just go back to schedule parallel and call it a day. And okay, that was a seriously long-winded explanation for just adding a few lines to our system, but I hope that helps you understand what's happening underneath of those lines. As Dots is still in development and the internet has a long memory, it's likely you're gonna stumble on a video describing the older syntax that we've shown you in here. By using the system base, however, you can get the benefits of multi-threading with just a little tweak on how we used to write systems. Suffice it to say, Unity is doing a lot of the hard work for us, and it feels like the syntax has settled down so it's not quite as difficult as it used to be. So with this, you should be fairly well armed with the basics of dots. There are, of course, more features, but this should give you just enough to dive in and really start using ECS with the job system. The next step is to go out and just make something with it. If you're interested in building a mini game with dots, make sure you sign up for the Game Academy mailing list. Just follow the link in the descriptions. Now, if there's enough interest, we could have a full on course to build a complete dots project to better put all of these parts into perspective. Of course, if classic Unity is what you're more interested in, don't forget to support the channel with our other premium courses. Just follow the links to get the discounts. Usually we pick one topic or project and take it from nothing to a fully working prototype. Anyway, that's all I have for this episode. Thanks, this is Wilmer. Until the next video, I'll see you in the game. Again.